Hello, I'm Matthew Tesh, one of the co-founders of Heavy Robotics. In this video, I'll be talking about robot kinematics. First, I'll give a brief high-level overview of some core concepts, and I'll follow this up with a real-world demonstration and some tips from practical implementation of these concepts. So the first question is, what is kinematics? Kinematics is the study of coordinate frames and how to represent points, vectors, and other coordinate frames with respect to each frame. Especially in robotics, this also applies to how to define coordinate frames relations based on joint angles of a robot, such as a robot arm. So this, this can help answer questions such as, where is the end of my robot? Or, how do I move my robot joints to get somewhere? And, where is the thing I see in my camera relative to my robot's hand? Now there's two basic concepts in, in kinematics. The first is forward kinematics, which is, given the joint angles of a robot, where are the frames and points of interest at the end of my robot? and inverse kinematics. So given a point of interest in the frame, where are the joint angles or space of joint angles that get you to that point or minimize the distance to that point? And this, this task usually involves some optimization. Briefly, I wanted to discuss some core concepts of kinematics and we'll cover what are coordinate frames and, and representations of these frames. How do you use those transformations between coordinate frames to transform points, vectors, and other transformations? And how can you define frames as functions of joint angles for a robot arm? The basis of kinematics is this concept of a coordinate frame. A coordinate frame is a set of axes or bases that allow you to define a unique set of coordinates to any point in the space you're working on. Typically in robotics, this will refer to an x, y, and z axis that define points in Cartesian space. However, there are other coordinate representations as well, and in some applications you will be working in only two dimensions. One thing to note about these frames is that a coordinate frame must be represented in a, a coordinate frame. You, you need to be able to tell where this x, y, and z axis is. And so one of the fundamental concepts here is going to be transforms between these frames. Using these transforms in these frames, we can fully define where points, vectors, and other frames are located and oriented. So using the basics of kinematics, you can transform the coordinates or these elements from one coordinate system to another. Now in robotics, a common use for these coordinate frames is to relate the position and orientation of the end effector to the base of the robot or to another world frame. So often you will transform the position of items viewed by a sensor into the same frame as the actual robot that is controlling and moving towards those items. Once items of interest are in the same frame, it becomes much easier to reason about the items and control the robot to manipulate or avoid these objects. For example, moving the robot end effector to the object seen by the camera requires knowing their relative position in the same coordinate frame. Now, to represent these transformations between frames, there are many possible representations. The ones that we have found are very general and useful are called homogeneous transforms. These are effectively four by four matrices where the top left corner, the top three by three matrix is a rotation matrix. And then there are, are the translation component up at the top right. So you have kind of your X, Y, and Z translation. To use these, you require only basic knowledge of matrix multiplication. It's not the most compact representation technically you could define a three X, Y, Z coordinates and three um, roll pitch yaw coordinates and define your entire kinematics by six numbers. And you'll notice this has nine numbers for the rotation and three numbers for the, the translation. So this is a total of 12 numbers. However, we have found that being able to take the intuition that, that is given by this and the ease of use in computation kind of overweighs that compact representation in a lot of cases. Also, it provides a very easy formula to invert this operation because it just involves transposing the rotation and applying a simple equation to find the, the new translation component. There's no full matrix inversion required to switch this transform. Now, once you have a matrix representation like this, one of the best things about this is that moving points from one frame to another means that you are just multiplying a vector with one at the end times this four by four transform. Decomposing this equation, we can see that this causes the x, y, z of the point that you are transforming to be multiplied by that rotation matrix, so to kind of be rotated, and then simply adding the, the translation component of that transform matrix. As a simple example here, we see how we can transform a single point, such as the origin of frame f, to frame f prime here, 
to generate point x, y, z. And we can translate that back to f prime to get our origin 0, 0, 0 coordinate back. Now testing such a simple example like this can often help verify that the basic ordering of all the transformations is correct in your logic. Transforming free vectors, so directions, is, is similar, but since they're, they represent a direction, their position isn't important. And so instead of adding a 1 to the bottom of the vector when we multiply them by that 4 by 4 transform, we add a 0 instead. This results in effectively rotating the vector by the rotation matrix and ignoring the translation component of the homogeneous transform. The last major component here is transforming these transformations between frames. So this can also be thought of combining transforms. For example, if we have a transform two frame C in the frame of frame B, and we have the transform two frame B in frame A, we can easily get the transform two frame C from frame A by just multiplying these transform matrices together. Remembering that you can easily find the inverse of these transformation matrices, you can convert points and vectors into any frame you care about as long as you can kind of hop through a chain of transformations or inverted transformations to get from one of those frames to another. Now finally, because many robots, and especially robot arms, are chains of links and joints, these kinematic chains are a useful way to build up the kinematics of a robotic system. By focusing on a single rotation and translation for each link of the robot, we can verify each link in this chain is defined correctly as we go. Combining these individual transformations allows us to create an expression for the transform to any frame of the robot we care about, commonly the end effector, while making it easy to update this expression if the robot is modified. Note that the individual transforms in this chain are a function of the individual joint angles. Therefore, the combined expression for the transform is a function of the joint angles of the system. Now we'll come back to this in a later video, but it's worth noting that we can also apply various operations to this function, such as the derivatives with respect to the joint angles of that point. Now this creates the ever-useful Jacobian matrix, which you'll see in the next video. Now that we've given a brief overview of the basic concepts of robot kinematics, I want to emphasize that what we have found to be some of the most important things to remember when working with coordinate frames in kinematics. Although kinematics is fundamental to most work in robotics, we have found that time and time again, bugs in the code always seem to come down to coordinate frames. They're never as easy as it seems like they should be. After implementing the kinematics for a system, and before trying to actually start writing and testing anything at a higher level, we really recommend visualizing and confirming the kinematics are correct. This visual debugging can help spot errors very quickly and intuitively, and helps you understand your data. It's useful in many other situations as well, not just for verifying kinematics. Now, regardless of whether you're programming a system in MATLAB, C++, Python, or something else entirely, finding a way to naturally and quickly visualize your data is, is fundamental to be able to, to accomplish robotics um, solutions very quickly. So here, we turn on the robot and we're visualizing the kinematics live as we go using a, a simple Python script. Here you can see the kinematics don't match, but it's very easy to identify the first module in the chain that is reversed. So live visualization like this makes this process very quick. But even if you log data and plot after the fact, these differences can still be very clear. Now, after fixing the issues and rerunning the code here, visual confirmation verifies that the kinematic description does match the physical system. Now note that to further verify this, you could trace known shapes in the world and verify the computed tip position followed by, follows this correct shape. So this will allow, would allow you to very carefully you know, determine the accuracy of the tip of your arm. So the next lesson with, we, we'd like to kind of emphasize is that we have found that representing coordinate transforms with 4 by 4 matrices creates an intuitive representation and it's very fast for computations. It makes it easy to transform points, vectors, it makes it easier to visualize your kinematics. Um, it, it just results in less debugging and less errors during your writing of your code. There are other common representations that are also great for certain situations. Um, one of the common representations is to use quaternions for the rotation matrices. These can really be useful for some operations and are more compact. They only require four numbers. However, they're less intuitive and may result in more operations actually to apply some of the transformations for points and vectors. Furthermore, these can be very error prone for beginners and even for advanced users. We've seen a lot of bugs crop up when converting back and forth between quaternions and applying rotations in, in quaternion form. Finally, there's also Euler angles, which are a common representation of 
of rotations. Now these are intuitive, but unfortunately they're non-standard. Due to the many, many conventions and issues with, with singularities when using Euler angles, we recommend avoiding Euler angles. Finally, our last recommendation is that using numeric solutions is really, we, we have found the way to go. It might seem tempting to write out a full analytic expression for the position of the frame as an, uh, a function of the joint angles. Now it's true that this can result in an expression that has less mathematical operations. However, it's so easy to make a mistake when generating this long complex analytic expression, and this code is not very transferable. Once you derive such an expression, you cannot easily modify this expression to add a link in the middle of your robot, for example. So instead, we recommend generating and evaluating each individual transform and just multiplying these computed matrices together. Additionally, you'll often want the intermediate frames that, that are in your robot anyway, so this is not really a wasted computation. Now finally, the drive for analytic solutions is often driven by concerns of performance and precision. For Ford kinematics, today's computer hardware really renders this concern moot. Even if you are concerned because you're transferring this to embedded hardware, we recommend debugging your code first with a full numeric solution before trying to apply that level of optimization. So finally, I just want to thank you for listening and briefly we covered the kind of what kinematics are for robots and some of the core concepts of coordinate frames, transformations, and forward kinematics here. And we also brought our recommendations for visualizing everything when you're when you're doing trying to debug your kinematics using 4x4 homogeneous transform matrices as a, a convenient intuitive and useful representation and don't be afraid to numerically evaluate sub expressions instead of trying to find a giant analytic expression that might be a little faster thanks for listening